This is Steve Zeltzer with KPFA Workweek Radio. And we're at a time in the world of, of science, of technology, where there are great potential leaps forward for humankind uh, using the development of technology and science. And at the same time, there are uh, great dangers to the world with climate and nuclear proliferation uh, that, that threaten the uh, future of the world for humanity. And I'm with David Hooks today, and David is a longtime uh, historian, Marxist, and scientist, and has been uh, studying technology and science uh, from the point of view of the working class, how to advance the needs of the working class. Uh, welcome to Workweek Radio. Thanks very much for talking to me. Yeah. So David, uh, first of all, um, we're t doing this interview in, in Manchester. Liver we're actually in Liverpool, next to Manchester. And this was the uh, beginning, really, of the Industrial Revolution. Um, and uh, uh, this Industrial Revolution now is, uh, we're now faced with a new revolution, technological revolution. The, the development of science and technology, what, what is the process by the, which this takes place? Well, it, it is obviously out to f find out what the laws of motion of matter are, to how matter uh, and uh, how energy and information uh, interact with each other. Uh, and of course, it, it, it's driven in, uh, under capitalism by the simple system of making more profit. So you, uh, so you st Liverpool, you may, may not know, but it's famous for football and pop music. But in fact, it was uh, one of the most imp important uh, ports for the slave trade. And so ships from Liverpool went to Africa and from Africa, they took the slaves to, to America. And then the products of slavery was brought back to Liverpool and transported inland where the Industrial Revolution was necessary in order to process the goods. That also meant, of course, understanding the laws of motion of matter in order, in order to improve and develop the machinery for profit, to create profit from the products of the slaver, slavery. So this is classically described by Marx, of course, uh, in, in, his, in Capital and, and Grundrisse and other, other writings. Now, one of the developments of, of capitalism uh, in Britain has been that areas like Manchester and Liverpool have declined. Uh, economically, and uh, capitalism has seen very little need to develop these areas and Britain as a whole, even though there's tremendous resources here. Yeah, there's enormous scientific resources in Britain. In Manchester area and Liverpool area, there's something like eight, ten universities. Many very important scientific discoveries were made in this area, including the structure of the atom, the, def the unit of energy, the jewel that was invented by, uh, developed by uh, the uh, Manchester businessman. Uh, and so on. So many important uh, scientific developments. But of course, for capitalism, the, the ruling issue is where do you make your money? How do you make increased profit? And of course, with an organized and, and literate working class in Britain, with their trade unions and so on, it's not so easy to screw workers, uh, and drive down their wages. So the, the, that's a problem. So they mo have moved production. For capital, they're not patriots. Uh, they're, they're interested only in profit, not patriotism. So they shift all their production to places where they can exploit workers in a more, and that is, means South Asia and China and and and, and so on. So they 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 are allowing these areas partially to decline, not completely, of course. They they, they wouldn't let it collapse completely. They, there are major major technological developments taking place even now in Manchester uh, uh, and, and to some extent in Liverpool, but they're not receiving the sort of support that um, uh, it would be necessary to, to, to make them develop at, at a sufficient pace. So they, they're also, the British ruling class, as one great Russian thinker said, thinking continents and centuries. They don't think about the next battle or the next attack. That's the Prussian ruling class. The British ruling class think in these very broad terms, are very conscious of the revolutionary potential of science. They know that because they emerged as a social class in the time of Elizabeth and, and before. Their chief thinker was Francis Bacon, who's recognized as the, the founder of the scientific method in, in many ways. So they are aware of the revolutionary imp import of science. And that's why they keep a sharp eye 
uh, and make sure uh, that the things don't get out of control. And the I scientific ideas don't spread too far in the working class, which of course would be fatal to, to them. For the working class to have a scientific understanding of history and the whole production process would be fatal to capitalism. And of course, one of the ways that uh, the capitalists try to uh, divert attention is through religion. Yes. You have in the United States, people believe uh, in religion that there is no climate warming and, and, uh, and you have uh, an ideological campaign to confuse people about what the issues are, blaming immigrants and this kind of thing, for basically what's happening within capitalism and the developments. Well, absolutely. It's amazing to me even now, although I was brought up in a devout Christian evangelical background, I'm amazed to what extent that particular reactionary form of religion is, is dominating, uh, dominant in the United States and how it's probably the chief ideological weapon for the American ruling class to divide the working class and, di uh, and so on. And um, the religion is, is still a powerful weapon, even though in Britain it's not so effective. In the United States, the, well, the most advanced scientific country in the world has the most backward ideologies that dominate whole sectors of the community. Some, I believe something like 40% of people uh, are, are born again or claim to be born again and things like that. Yeah. And they're the, they're the basis of Trump's support. 81% of Christian evangelicals voted for Trump, even though he's a total opposite of what they claim to be believing in, you know, the moral principles and all the rest of it. He's a degenerate uh, guy and so on. Now, one of the interesting comparisons in, between the United States and Britain vis-a-vis -vis the rest of the world is that even though technologies like the trains were developed here in, in Liverpool and, and, and Manchester, the first uh, intercity train actually took place here in this area. And in the United States, the development of the trains, the development of technology, the Industrial Revolution in the United States that took place, uh, the uh, infrastructure is falling apart, yes. the trains are breaking down here, <laughs> and the policies of privatization and capitalism are actually destroying the very technological developments that were first developed in, in uh, Liverpool and Manchester, and the high development of technology in the United States. What is the cause of this? Well, obviously, the, um, it's, it's the fundamental point that Marx makes, right, which I think is key to understanding almost everything else, is that capitalism cannot uh, develop the forces of production beyond a certain stage. They're held back by the social relations of production. It's the social relations that are holding back these enormous potential developments to develop proper integrated public transport systems. Just the British ruling class, just as the technology arrived for a proper to organize a proper integrated publicly owned transport system where buses and trains and, and boats and everything else could be linked together. The technology has just arrived. They decide to privatize it, break it up into little bits, it, and, and one lot are fighting the other lot, and so on. But that's an ideologically driven matter, and they were frightened. The, the, that's why they attacked the National Health Service, because the National Health Service is a perfect example of what you might call a communist organization, because everybody's working together to help everybody else, and they all, at, at, uh, whether they're the top doctors or the guy pushing the trolley along, they're all involved in, your, in, your, in supporting you, and they're doing it not for profit, they're doing it just for an ordinary wage, and the capitalists attack such institutions because they're very negation of their own system. And the, uh, this crisis, this social crisis has developed. I mean, you have, for example, technology automation, information technology, uh, artificial intelligence, uh, deep data, which really can be used to advance society. It seems like the opposite is taking place. Uh, exactly. They are not they are negating the true potential of the technologies that they have created. That's Marx's point. They create these fantastically powerful productive forces, but they can't develop them because they, of their social, the social relations, that is the private ownership of wealth and, 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 and the control of society. So my, my view is that um, we have to, my own particular view is, is to say that we are on the verge of what I call the second solar digital revolution. 
the first solar digital revolution, that is the capture of sunlight and the use of a digital technology, was actually the emergence of life itself on this planet. Where once, once you could capture solar energy and once you had a system of transmitting information from one generation to the next, that's the genetic code. So it was a, a digital but a four-bit system, a four, the four, um, uh, four letters in the alphabet of the, the digital code. And once that they could capture sunlight through photosynthesis, life took off on the planet. We're now approaching a second solar digital revolution where we use binary digital systems combined with solar energy. We can create uh, a truly human planet uh, where everybody shares in the benefits. And we, what I call, we will develop what I call a um, equ equitable uh, ecological equilibrium state on the planet we can uh, and that's possible today we have the technology to do it only thing holding us back is this pursuit of profit by privately owned production system that's holding back the enormous potential for integrating the whole production system on this planet for uh, accessing solar energy for buying solar energy from africa and using that to uh, fund their own development so they can sell it energy to us or we can or we can exchange that for technologies for the so that the small farmers of Africa can stay on the farms and be productive and the global climate uh, the warming of the climate is uh, forcing people in Africa forcing people in Asia um, in islands uh, into a, a desperate situation for survival how would this development of this new technology uh, help these people well what we would do, we would, re instead of researching in, in, in the Northwest, I propose through scientists for global responsibility that we set up centers for, develop for technology for sustainable development, specializing in different areas, making solar powered uh, agricultural equipment, solar powered uh, education, solar powered health systems that can be translated to Africa and help them re help the People's, the people who run their farms ecologically, but they need input of energy and, and, and technology to improve, to, so they can develop without going down a fossil fuel route, and that's possible. I propose to the, in the labor movement that the northwest of England should become a powerhouse developing those technologies. We have the knowledge, we can link up with China, we can link up with other countries to, uh, to provide uh, build large-scale solar power stations in the desert areas of Africa, and in exchange for, the, for that energy, we can uh, give them, in exchange, uh, technologies for the, social, for the agricultural development in the rest of Africa and avoid them being captured by agribusiness, the Bill Gates Foundation and people like that who work closely with, with agribusiness, dri driving the people off the land, putting them into slums, and so on. Uh, and then uh, using these genetically modified uh, crops and tying people to to, to these uh, this sort of technology, and that's totally negative. And it's quite possible, with our scientific knowledge, to replace that system by a proper humanly based, ecologically sound system. Now it seems uh, the the a lot of the culture today, movies, the, you have a dystopian future, where the future of humanity is one of uh, uh, a very wealthy, uh, living in another planet, and the, the people left in this world. How would you transform that dynamic, which people see as uh, the likely result of the development of capitalism in the world that we have? Well, th there are many ways to go about that. We Obviously, the key thing is to, to, to show the working class that they have no future under capitalism, that's the key thing, and that the planet has no future under capitalism. If capitalism will actually destroy the conditions for life on this planet, it has to be replaced. That has got to be the uh, dominant message which we take into the working class and they support the development. Those workers who are being marginalized under capitalism, there are a large percentage of workers don't have steady jobs. In Britain, it's about 30%. In South Korea, it's 50%. They're the precariat. Now, those workers can be organized through trade unions and they can demand that they be put back to work to make the solar-based technologies that are necessary for the development of the planet as a whole. Why should they be unemployed when there's a massive demand 
uh, potential demand for the t technologies, solar-based technologies, and that's, it seems to me, but unless you, it, it is gripped by the working class as, as a class, and, and demanded of their, their leaders that, that they, they uh, make, make the resources available to develop this, then there will, there will be no future for this planet. It's a, it's, a, it's a fundamental class political issue that, will be, that has to be resolved uh, in, in order to make progress. Now, the Jeremy Corbyn development, somewhat like the Sanders, although it's different, uh, a lot of young people yeah. have joined the uh, British Labour Party. It's 600,000. It's now the largest social democratic party in Europe. Uh, what kind of vision and program do you have for the development of energy for technology in a new Britain? Yeah, well, I, I believe that uh, Jeremy Corbyn did actually make a mistake during a, a, a by-election campaign when he supported building fresh nuclear power stations, and that, that is a mistake because it's a dead-end technology, it's very dirty, very expensive, uh, and uh, very dangerous. Uh, so it's a dead-end technology. The Germans call it a Zackgasse, a, a blind alley. We don't want to go down that blind alley. So Corbyn should massively finance the development of renewable energy technologies. This will create a lot of work for the workers, and they can be built in next to, just as a demonstration, next to the nuclear processing plant, which you have to keep in order to clean up the mess or the filth created by uh, the nuclear industry, the nuclear power industry. Corbyn should do that. And I, I, we in Scientists for Global Responsibility, we are arguing and discussing with the labor movement the, the, the possibilities of that. So that, that, can be, that will be what the, he should, and he should set up centers research centres. Just after the war, Britain was bankrupt. But Britain, the British ruling class and a Labour government built a large number of institu institutes and institutions to develop nuclear power in order to support nuclear weapons. And we were bankrupt, but we did that. We found the money somehow. We borrowed it or whatever we did. If we use that as a counter-example, we can build and set up institutes for developing solar-based technologies now, and that will create a lot of work. It'll 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 help us in our in a it'll be a form of defence because we will have a lot of support from peoples across the world because we're developing technologies they really need, not technologies of death and destruction. As American writer uh, John Perkins said, we should be an economy of life rather than an economy of death. Yeah. And both the United States, uh, which is a declining imperialist empire, and Britain, which is uh, a long time ago d declining imperialist empires, it seems uh, that uh, the, the desperation of the capitalist class is that they're driven more and more towards war uh, surrounding Russia, uh, surround the Asian pivot, surrounding China. It seems like the solution of these declining imperialist empires is to become more adventurous and more warmongers. Is, is that the case? Yes, absolutely. They're clearly uh, trying to provoke Russia. Russia has no interest in, in invading anybody. It hasn't invaded anybody at all. And neither The United States, as a matter of fact, did invade Russia. Yeah, the United States have invaded Russia. Along with Britain. A long time ago, at the, the Russian Revolution, they invaded it, and they've been uh, provoking Russia and China and, 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 uh, for, 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 for many years. And the, they now, the only route out for capital in these extraordinary uh, crises that it's in is, of course, to, in a way, to create destruction. That's, they always do that. They start wars. Uh, to destroy capital because they're overproducing capital and they can't re the market system of capital can't uh, realize the value of, of, of what they've produced so they start a war to destroy uh, the basis of production to create a new basis and this is a well-known phenomenon and unfortunately if they if they start one now they could end up by destroying the whole planet so they so, parallel to the environmental crisis of capital is this drive towards war uh, and, 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 and so on. But, of course, they have a problem. They will destroy themselves because if they do start such a war, that's the end. China and Russia have the capability to... Uh... can easily destroy the United States in a few minutes. Even in a conventional war, 
Even if it wasn't a nuclear war, the United States, all its leading capital ships would be destroyed overnight. Russians and Chinese have developed missiles that can come down at 3,000 miles an hour vertically onto the ship, and all your aircraft carriers and everything else will be wiped out in a conventional war. That's if you don't go nuclear and you try to take on China and Russia with conventional weapons, you will be wiped off the face of the earth very quickly. But it seems that despite the fact that uh, that the world is uh, on the precipice uh, of a global war, uh, that the uh, capitalists in, in the United States and Britain are proceeding business as usual. Yeah, well, they, they, they have no other concept other than making profits. And if they, if, if despite the fact that it's a kind of craziness, uh, the, 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 they they are proceeding with with strategies that clearly lead to death and destruction of the whole planet and their own system, but for some reason they can't see beyond the next uh, the bottom line to make profits and so on, and that's the character of a of a degenerating ruling class. And this new movement here around Corbyn, um, what do you see? How do you see developing it uh, to transform? Britain and to uh, take it forward in the in the face of what is clearly a collapsing economy and, a, and a, an environment which uh, is threatened. Well, Corbyn must be bold. He, he, he must not sub, uh, uh, submit to uh, pressures from from the Bank of England. One of the key things he would have to do is take over and control the Bank of England, because it's the Bank of England which is financing a lot of imperialism and, 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 and things like that. He's got to get control of the bank. He must replace the Bank of England by a proper people's bank that fund uh, productive processes rather than speculation. And m most of the money that the, was created under, uh, under the... Um, uh, uh, during the after the crisis to to keep to stabilize capital, most of it was used for speculation. It wasn't used for for, for productive. The same is true in America. The money that was created under quantitative easing, trillions of dollars were created. That wasn't used to build a rocket train, a bu bullet train from San Francisco to to uh, Los Angeles. We're still waiting. Uh, it's nearly waiting. thirty years afterwards. Or create a, a completely new public transport system and repair. That wasn't used for that at all. It was used for speculation, and buying these uh, derivatives and things like that. There are one thousand trillion worth of derivatives floating around. What Karl Marx understood, he called it fictitious capital. And he, he explained in, in the final volume of Capital, Volume 3, he explains how, how capitalism will create fictitious capital, not based on any uh, real productive activity, just by speculation, a multiple spec like one enormous, gigantic um, betting shop, as if you go into a betting shop and you take a bet on something, then you pass the bet on to somebody else, and so on. And, and this goes round and round and round, and climbs and climbs and climbs. You've got this massive mountain, and that's now undermining the whole financial system of capital. But that's the only, only way they can work. They don't want to, uh, you know, they, they, they will not uh, fund public goods. That, that's against their ideology, and, it's, and they think it, it is against their class interest, which it is, of course. Yeah. And this is one of the great contradictions, because people in the United States are asking, why is our infrastructure falling apart? The same in Britain. We have so much wealth. You have 130 billionaires in California, yet we can't get a bullet train between San Francisco and Los Angeles. There's virtually gridlock in Silicon Valley. People are being kicked out of their homes. Uh, you have thousands and thousands of people in tents in, in the richest center in the world. I mean, these contradictions seem to be growing uh, enormously under the development of capitalism today. What needs, of course, is the development of, of a counter-ideology, a new way, a socialist way of looking, thinking about the whole planet. You've got to think in planetary terms today because of the environmental issue, because of nuclear weapons. You've got to see the issue as a global planetary issue. So there has to be uh, discussions, worldwide discussions, within the working class of all countries as what the alternative future is for humanity. That's got to be, and now we have the technology to do it. We have the internet. It's possible to uh, participate in discussions in China, Africa, United States, 
You can have meetings between people organized on the internet so we can exchange ideas, we can translate for our different languages and so on. It's the possibility, the material basis for a massive internationalist movement among the working class exists. It's up to us to, to create the conditions. And the Corbyn movement is a small part, can play a role in that. And Corbyn himself would understand that, as would MacDonald. There are people with, who, who have read uh, Marx and people, whatever they, they say they are now, they, they, they understand the, ne the international character of the working class. The working class have no country, and therefore they must create a world in which it's not necessary to have countries, expressed by my old school friend John Lennon in his film, in his wonderful song, Imagine. Imagine there are no boundaries. Imagine there are no wars. Imagine all these things. Now, now is the time for our imagination to get loose and create uh, alternatives. And I think the possibilities, there are possibilities, we can't, guarantee, nothing's guaranteed, that Corbyn might release powerful and creative forces within the working class and in the artistic and creative community. We'll have a, something like happened in Russia after the revolution. There was a massive artistic flowering uh, triggered by the, the possibilities of the revolution before it was crushed by Stalin, of course, but there, there were these enormous things. And that, that's possible under Corbyn. If, if, if he has, you know, if, if he doesn't resist, resist the advice from the Bank of England or, or his civil servants. Yeah. And this development of the internet, uh, the ability to link up the working class worldwide uh, without borders, although some companies are trying to suppress uh, the internet, uh, Facebook and others, uh, Zuckerberg, is this the first time in the history of the world working class that you've actually had the ability through these communication technologies to reorganize production on a global level. Well, exactly. That, it, it, it is obvious, and even if I'm talking to my barber's assistant, he's a young lad training, we talk about science and so on while he's cutting my hair, and then he suddenly announces, actually, what we need is a social revolution. I said, absolutely <laughs> correct. This is a barber's assistant. He's been studying science. We always discuss science and all the rest of it. He's not educate, particularly educated, but he's worked out that we need a social revolution on a global scale. He, he's not thinking just about Britain. He's thinking, and this is a young lad. He probably hasn't any much. He just worked it out for himself. So the possibilities now of interact, we, but we must have concrete plans. We must have the vision, but we must be able to translate a vision into practical demonstrative things. For instance, we're going to hopefully team up with a, a social enterprise in Germany, which is called Africa Green Tech. Africa Green Tech uh, make solar-powered shipping containers that can bring solar power to African communities. Okay, it's a combination of German and African scientists working together. They've already installed some of these in, in, in communities in Africa. We want to collaborate with them. We want to learn from their experience and maybe add, add something from our own experience and, and think in these global terms. And, uh, but we must have concrete plans. You, it's, it's very easy to, to waffle about internationalism and so on, but you must, how, 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 what are we actually going to do about it? No. And, and uh, that's what a scientist for global responsibility, we're trained scientists, so we think it's wonderful having all these great ideas in people's heads, but what does it mean in practice? How does that affect your practice? And that's a key issue. And Corbyn's movement in Britain has the potential to unleash massive creativity, not only among the working class politically and, and organizationally, but also among the scientific sectors of the working class who are being stymied by the, by, by the ro social relations of capital and held back from the enormous uh, potential that the knowledge has. And, and this, this, this crisis in capitalism, I mean, could you have ever believed that you would have to have a march for science in the United States yes. of scientists? I mean, this is what causes something like that. Well, that's a, a very powerful indicator that some things are seriously wrong in the United States. That professional people who are usually well paid and are sitting in their laboratories, everything's okay, and they, you know, just forget about what the consequences of your research are. You might be poisoning the planet or preparing to bomb the hell out of some peasants in Southeast Asia or anything like that. Just forget about that. Just get on with your career. When that system, when the, when they lose the political support of this layer, which are essential for their own system of production, 
then that's that's serious stuff. Uh, and it, 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 what we have to understand is that capital arose as a system, first in England and elsewhere in, in Holland and so on, on the developments of scientific understanding of nature. Got rid of feudalism, Marx, as you know, in, in the Communist Manifesto, praises capital. It's, it's like a pin of praise to capital for getting rid of feudalism, right? And that's the extraordinary thing. And so the emergence of science and scientific understanding of nature was crucial for the development of capital. But of course, it's crucial for its negation. It, science cannot be developed properly under capital now. Capital is using science in, in this totally destructive and negative, socially, politically, and military negative way, and, and therefore must be replaced by socialized production. And that's clear from the history of the universe, actually, that cooperation and is the key principle in organizing for the emergence of the uni life itself. So. And are you optimistic? I know a lot of people could not believe that somebody like Corbyn could actually lead the Labour Party, come to the leadership of the Labour Party, and probably likely be the government, the next government in Britain. Well, of course, it's a surprise to a lot of people, but in a way, it, it's not a surprise because la the Labour Party had just become a, a, essentially a pale reflection of the Tory party. Tony Blair, what Thatcher was said, what was her greatest contribution? She said, Tony Blair. So Tony Blair took the Labour Party in a totally negative direction. And of course, it collaborated with capital and then it caused all these social and, and, and crises of privatization of, of production when it was clearly not in the interests of masses of people. And there's an overwhelming support for taking back into public ownership. Uh, Corbyn has proposed the, the railways and the energy systems and so on. All that can be re... And that will be a, a create a massive amount of jobs for workers, but it will also help them to think in a way more internationally, because once you think about energy, you've got to think about the world as a whole. So it will encourage the internationalism of the working class. And Corbyn has demonstrated in his commitment through life, through his support of Palestinians, support of uh, fighting against apartheid in South Africa. He has a whole history of thinking internationally. And that's why they they hate him. That's why they, they're, they're constantly trying to label him in some way or other. And he clever, he, he's too smart for them in a way because he, he said, I, I, all this personal stuff is rubbish. Let's talk about politics. Let's talk about what you're proposing and analyze what your suggestion is. And he's getting support by some of the best economists who think in radical terms, like Mariana Matsukoto, who has shown that most creative innovations in, in capitalism actually arise out of product, are funded by the state not funded by private enterprise. The same in the United States. Drugs and all yeah. kinds of things are actually funded by the United States. Basic research internet was yes, funded by yes. the United States. And then the profit is taken out and given to the capitalists. Exactly. It becomes a, a pri they privatize these creative ideas. Uh, and so the, they socialize the risk and privatize the profit. Uh, so, yeah. That, that, that's it. And, and the, you know, go back to what we were talking about, scientists are beginning to think. When scientists start thinking, wow, my subject is being held back by this stupid system, and start questioning ca the, the rationale of capitalism, then, then capitalism is in serious trouble. Because they're a sector of the working class. Scientists are a, sector, a privileged sector, but they're nevertheless a sector of the working class. They earn the money, they, earn, they keep going by earning wages for work. They're the part of the working class, but a privileged part which it no longer can be privileged under late capitalism. 